Hello everyone! I wanted to start this video by saying that this is a scripted video. I'm planning on making higher quality content for you guys in the future, so hopefully this doesn't sound too tacky or anything. Uh, anyways, today I'm going to be talking about FNAF World Redacted. I was interested in this game because I was one of like two humans out there who enjoyed FNAF World. Uh, I guess Doggo did too. So I was interested when I was promised a version of the game that improved all of its issues. I'm going to walk you through my adventure. Can you call FNAF World an adventure? It's more like a light troll. Uh, I'm gonna walk you through my light stroll through FNAF World Redacted. Credit to Grarus B. Aris for making the game, hopefully I'm saying that right, and let's get started. Now the first thing I see when booting up the game is that it keeps your save file from FNAF World, so you can just start Redacted from where you left off. It even keeps any trophies from the endings you've completed. I decided to start a new game for a fresh experience. Uh, the other new thing right off the bat is that each character now has 4 moves instead of 3. This is nice because it turns relatively useless characters like Shadow Freddy and turns them into at least half decent team members. Fredbear and other NPCs are given new dialogue, and it's extremely fun. It feels like each character now has their own personality, which is a major flaw in FNAF World. Fredbear goes from making fun of the game, to calling you out for taking a secret pathway to Halloween Update, to even referencing the mobile port. Who even knows about the FNAF World mobile port? The shopkeepers also have unique and interesting dialogue. For instance, Lulbit only talks in numbers. Well, for the most part. I didn't actually talk to Didi or Mendo, because I usually never do. They tend to be useless characters anyways. But it really helps to give the feeling of a world instead of an empty void in the middle of nowhere. Another odd detail is that there are no random overworld encounters. You have to manually press the fight button to get into a battle. I don't really like this decision, because if you don't want to battle, the whole RPG aspect is gone from the game. Essentially making it Walking Simulator 2020 Edition, with Jogging DLC! Uh, the only reason to battle is to get new characters. Speaking of, the character system is so heavily improved. Uh, number one, it seems the chances of encountering the character is increased. Number two, they spawn in the overworld where you can go to talk to them. Each one has their own personality, just like the shopkeepers in Fredbear. They're a lot of fun to talk to. And three, you can either pay to get them or fight to get them. This is a nice mechanic too, because if you don't think you're strong enough, you can just pay to get them. Although, again, it removes the fighting aspect from the game. Should I do a minimum battles challenge in this game? Uh, let me know in the comments. Character battles in this game act like boss battles, with a health bar and all. I really like this change because I like knowing how much damage I've done and what move I should use. The game continues like normal until Lily Here Lake. While nothing too special happens here, it's worth noting they made the Seagoon boss here visible on the map. Fredbear also gives a fun fact. To quote, Although the Maker made the sea monster visible, it turns out the thing does not attack at random. It's on a set path. Uh, not sure why that is, though. No one. So, after that fun fact, the game just plays out like normal FNAF world. I would have liked a map change or something else to make the experience fresh. At the very least, the grind for characters in Pinwheel Funhouse was way quicker, since you can do as many fights as you want in a relatively short time. I go to get the auto shield chip before I fight the security owl. The... how do you even pronounce this? The and asterisk three underscore TWRE world? Mm, that doesn't really roll off the tongue. Oh well. The glitch world has gotten overhauled graphically. The original game just had it to where all the collision was turned off, so the graphic update is cool. I really like the pink aesthetic. They even added the little glitch spots so you can tell how to get back to the normal world. Uh, this is nice because sometimes I would get lost in the glitch world and then I was stuck fighting a ton of enemies. Uh, speaking of, the glitch world is the only area in the game that has overworld encounters, although it does seem too frequent. A tone down in the enemy encounter rate would be good. It was also now that I just realized you can switch between the 3D and 8-bit overworld. That's a nice detail. Uh, this is what the Halloween update looks like in 8-bit. I'm showing this because update 1.1, I think, uh, but don't quote me on that, fixed the map to be 3D, so you would never be able to see the Halloween update in 2D. So I beat the security owl, and like, I'm a thousand percent confident fighting Scott. Just, just watch what happens.
the Halloween characters aren't as buff as I thought. Looks like Jacko Bomb got nerfed a bit, and Gift Boxes got nerfed a lot. In the original game, Gift Boxes revived everyone on the team, both parties. In this game, it only revives one party, the one the Gift Box animatronic is in. If you're fighting Scott, definitely bring two Gift Box animatronics. I didn't fight Chica's Magic Rainbow because, to be honest, I can't even beat her in the normal game because time limits stress me out so much. Ah! Uh, and also, I wanted to get this video out as quick as I could, so I only did two endings. The clock ending, which didn't have any major changes, if I'm being honest. And the ending where you fight Scott, which was pretty funny. Because they made it to where Scott called out the creator of the game and was like, Hey, this is pretty cool, so... Eh, just some shameless self-promoting there. Eh, it's kind of fun, though. Anyways, that was FNAF World Redacted. I think this game enhances the story and world building really nicely, and the new dialogue is super fresh and kind of funny. I don't really like the removal of random encounters, though, as it takes away from the little RPG aspect FNAF World actually has. If you are going to play FNAF World, I think I would recommend this version. It fixes fixes the issue of almost never getting characters after battle, and, as I said earlier, adds a ton of world building and fun dialogue. If I were to give FNAF World a 6 out of 10, I would give Redacted a 7 or a 7.5. But that's my review, I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you did, that's good. What, you thought I was going to tell you to like and subscribe? <laughs> nah. But I do plan on doing more scripted videos in the future. I really want to make higher quality content now that I've surpassed 500 subscribers. By the way, thank you so much. However, this does mean that videos will take a little longer to produce, so bear with me. Also, school is starting soon, so that doesn't help. I do, however, plan to stream every Saturday uh, because of the lack of content. I will see you guys next time. Peace out. Bye. Uh, hello, post, uh, post-production crusty croissant here. I, I realize this video isn't very long. I do, I do plan on making longer videos in the future. This one was just short because I just didn't have a lot to say. The game is very similar to FNAF World, and if you've played FNAF World, you wouldn't want me to just tell you what FNAF World is again. So, I just talked about all the new features and redacted, and it honestly wasn't a lot, so it didn't take me that long. Alright, well, see you next time, guys. Peace out. Bye.